The problem from this video can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link and you can download a copy of this and all of my problems for yourself. Now, if you check the website and you click on videos, you'll see there are more videos than those I've listed publicly on YouTube. You can see that there's uh, every problem covered in the workbook has either a public video or a members only video. If you'd like access to the members only video, just click the join button beneath the video player on YouTube. All right, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem 8 to a this has us exploring depreciation and we're going to learn a few different methods. So if you look back to chapter three, we learned one method, straight line, the same depreciation every year. And if you watch the intro video for this chapter, I kind of indicated like maybe that doesn't make sense for all assets and there are other ways of doing it. So this uh, kind of this question has us review and just remember straight line. And that's what we'll do in the first video. There's a few new tweaks to be added here. Uh, and the second video of this series will be on units of production and the third video double declining balance, which is notorious with my students. Uh, but let's get started with straight line. So let's read the question. On March 31st, 2024, Kemp Company purchased a new vehicle for $25,000. The vehicle, so again, I'm thinking, okay, debit, vehicle, credit, cash, or accounts payable. Um, the vehicle or some sort of bank loan, but anyway, the vehicle, that's not relevant to the question. I don't know why I'm saying it. The vehicle had an expected useful life of five years and an expected residual value of $5,000. Uh, now this is a term we haven't really discussed so far, residual value. And the key to the whole thing is the word residual. And if you think residue is part of it, if you ever watched an ad for like dish soap, they talk about like residue is the stuff left over when the thing's done washing. Uh, well, residual value is like the leftover value. So we got this $25,000 vehicle. We're going to use it for five years, after which time we think it's going to be worth $5,000. Another word here that you'll hear uh, used for residual value is salvage value. We think we can sell the thing for $5,000 afterwards. So that creates kind of an interesting calculation, and I'll just do it right at the top here. Uh, the cost of an asset, which in this case was uh, $25,000, minus the residual value, which in this case was $5,000, equals the depreciable cost, the amount that we'll be able to depreciate this asset for. So we're planning to, over the life of the asset, reduce its value by $20,000. Uh, again, it's going to go from 25, the value of 25 down to five. So that would mean a reduction of $20,000 is required. And that $20,000 becomes a very important number for our calculations. Okay, reading on. The company expected that in those five years, the vehicle would be driven for 100,000 kilometers based on the following schedule. And there's a schedule of what they're expecting to drive. Uh, now it says, assuming a December 31st year end, prepare a depreciation, depreciation schedule for the life of the asset using first straight line. So let's do our straight line schedule. Um, now, the formula is pretty simple. It's the depreciable cost divided by the number of years that we think the asset's going to be useful for. It'll give us a rate and our rate is going to be 20,000 divided by five is $4,000 per year. So we're going to own this asset for five years. But remember, 2024 is a partial year. We'll own it for nine months in 2024. And in five years, we'll own it for just a few months of that year. So it's you can see here, we're actually looking like we're owning it for one, two, three, four, five, six years. But remember, it's like three or uh, nine months here if everything goes according to plan. And then we'll own it for like three months here. So it's the, the ones on either end are partial years. So anyway, that's... Uh, you'll see how that works in our calculation. So we buy the thing on March 31st, 2024. So let's do this year 2024, uh, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 
2029. Okay, and uh, this helps me think about it. Number of months that will own it during that year. And the answer here is, well, we'll own it for nine months, March 31st to December 31st, March. So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Yes, that's nine months. So I always go like nine twelfths. Uh, then 12 out of 12 months, 12 out of 12 months, 12 out of 12 months, 12 out of 12 months. And in 2029, if I own it for exactly five years, I'm going to own it till March 31st, 2029. So that's three months, three out of 12. And if we add up all these months, 9 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 3, you're going to find we own it for 60 months in total, which, of course, is five years. Okay. So our straight line depreciation couldn't be more straightforward. It's 4000 bucks a year. In year one, 9 twelfths of 4000 Let me get my calculator out, although I think I can do this in my head. 9 divided by 12 times our rate of $4,000 a year is $3,000. In year two, we own it for the full year, so it's just a full $4,000. In year three, full year, $4,000. Year four, full year, $4,000, $4,000. And in the final year, three twelfths times 4,000 is 1,000. Now when I total this up, three plus four plus four plus four plus four plus one, I get $20,000 as my depreciation, which shouldn't be a surprise because that was my depreciable cost, right? So these numbers match and my amortization schedule is good. And that's my game plan, right? My game plan might change, but that's, you know, my best guess as to what's going to happen for depreciation for this asset. So there we have it. Now, this also would feed journal entries, right? Every one of these would represent a year-end adjusting entry, debit, depreciation expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. We weren't asked for that, so I'm not going to do the journal entries at this time. Uh, we've done straight line, pretty straightforward. Why do they call it straight line? It's the same for every full year, right? If I were to graph this on a chart, it would look like a straight line, 4K, 4K, 4K every full year. So that's why they call it straight line depreciation. Uh, in our next video, we're going to learn units of production. Stay tuned for that.